Welcome back to the Combo Cabal. I am your host, Brian Cook, and today we will be playing the Epic Storm 13.1. But before we get into the specifics of this very deck list, why don't you check out an ad from our new sponsor, Metallic Dice Games. Level up your game with a dice set from Metallic Dice Games. They make high quality dice and dice accessories in a variety of sizes, colors, and materials. Visit MetallicDiceGames.com to get yours today and make sure to use promo code STORM10 at checkout. You can find that link in the description below or the pinned comment. That link is tracked so that way Metallic Dice Games knows where the traffic is coming from. And don't forget to use that promo code at checkout. So we're playing 13.1. It's a little bit different from the previous list you'll see the last video that we uploaded was about two weeks ago this is the deck list from that video you'll notice 13 lands the basic swamp is here two galvanic relay in the main deck still we still have the the big innovation of the last list was for main deck mishra's bobble and we're still doing that over ponder i've been loving it i know that alex mckinley has as well and then a couple changes in the sideboard so we're going to go back to 13.1 now and well, what's the difference, right? So here we have 12 lands instead of 13. You might notice there's no basic swamp. And with cutting ties from the basic swamp, we were able to reevaluate our mana base. So our first initial thought was, okay, well, let's just cut the swamp and then we can fix our fetches. So when you cut the basic swamp in the previous mana base, so it was the mana base that had Tropical Island in it, Scalding Tarn became the best fetch in the deck because it got literally everything. But the problem with that was we were still playing three islands. And when you're only having four copies of Brainstorm and one Echo plus a few cyborg blue cards, you really need three blue sources. So when you break the deck down by color, red, black are the two most popular colors. And then you have green and then blue. So... Do you really want Tropical Island? And in that previous video, a bunch of people were like, what about Bayou? What about Bayou? In the comments, honestly, it was kind of annoying, but I appreciate your enthusiasm. I really do. So Bayou doesn't make sense when you're playing 13 lands. I, like, I know that it's going to sound a little bit hypocritical because I'm playing it today, but when you're on 13 lands, this mana base is literally perfect. But when you go down to 12, you have to adjust a little bit. So one of the problems with cutting the basic swamp is we were going down to two black sources that are both wastelandable. So we needed to fix that. That was step number one, because if red and black are the two most popular colors in the deck, we need to have the mana base reflect that. So we wanted to cut a blue source and we wanted to add a black source. Alex McKinley ran his calculator because I don't know if you're aware of this, if you don't watch enough videos, but Alex built a mana base calculator for us and it's super effective. So Alex ran the calculator and the swap was actually pretty simple. It just said to cut the trop for Bayou, which gives the people what they want. I'm glad to hear that. But with doing so, four copies of Scalding Turn no longer made sense. And said so we want to be running four copies of Bloodstained Mire because it gets every single land in the deck. The other secondary fetch lands, so I'm talking about Misty Rainforest, Scalding Turn, and Vernon Catacombs, they all miss one land where Bloodstained Mire gets four. You might be thinking, well, what about pithing needle or surgical extraction i guess so but like if someone opens up a needle they're going to be naming wishcloth they're not naming your bloodstained mire i think that you should have a better mana base than worry about needle that's my two cents so there's no swamp we're back up to three black sources we have three red sources which also helps with the cyborg pulverize but honestly even if you weren't playing the pulverize i think this is the mana base you want you want three mountains and then from there, we have two green sources, two blue sources. So it reflects the mana base of the, or the colors in the deck reflect the mana base. And it just makes a lot of sense to me. Well, why did we go down to 12 lands, right? Like, why does that make sense? So I was chatting with Alex McKinley after that initial video, and Alex suggested maybe going up to 14 lands. And I said, what? What are you talking about, Alex? Come on. And Alex is like, well, I don't know. I just felt like maybe we could use a 14th land. And I told Alex, I'm not trying to make fun of Alex here. I definitely value Alex's opinion. But I said, Alex, I am closer to cutting a land than I am to adding one. And Alex thought that was pretty interesting. And I, I explained, <clears throat> excuse me, I explained that Mox Opal is now essentially a five color land. This is a city of brass with a minimal drawback in the stack with the minimal drawback being metalcraft versus dealing us a damage. And I'd rather have the Metalcraft drawback than damage being dealt. So when we went up to 22 artifacts to add in Mishra's Bobble, Mox Opal became a very consistent mana source. So 
what I found was I was actually flooding in more games than I was uh, being mana screwed due to 12 lands. So with Mox Opal being a more consistent mana source, I felt like the 13th land wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. Whew. Okay. So I said that I was closer to going up on Mox Opal than, you know, adding a 14th land or whatever. So why would we make that change, right? Like, we're the deck that plays all these really sweet spells, like Ad Nauseam, you benefit from the extra Opal, Echo of Aeons, once again, you benefit from something that allows you to play more than one land per turn. It's actually a pretty similar thought to uh, CDH or competitive EDH, where at some point you start adding in talismans over lands because talismans aren't a turn based resource where lands are. So it's the same sort of thought philosophy here, but they also fuel Galvanic Relay, and that's actually pretty huge for us. So that's another reason to go up on Mox Opal. That's sort of what I have on the main deck. There's no other changes. I mean, a lot of people have been messaging me, being like, hey, is Mishra's Bobble really the real deal? I think it is. I think this deck feels considerably more powerful with 12 lands and 4 Bobble than the previous list. There's nothing wrong with running 13.0. I felt like this deck list was fine, but we finessed it a little bit, and this has just been more successful. And we're always looking to innovate and figure out the lists, but we're always trying to push it to be better. I'm never going to get stuck on one deck version and just be like, this is the definitive list for all of time. I'm going to try to push that boundary. And that's what we were doing with Mishra's Bobble. And I, I believe, I truly believe we found something better than Ponder in this specific deck list. I'm not trying to say Bobble is better than Ponder across the board, but when you're an artifact based storm deck that has Galvanic Relay, Mox Opal, and then these broken storm spells in it, it makes sense to run Bobble over Ponder. It's not going to be better 100% of the time, but I think it's going to be better a majority of the time. In the sideboard, we have three copies of Madden, or I'm sorry, three copies of Abrupt Decay for Maddening Hex decks. Uh, you just can't afford to lose to Maddening Hex. That said, I haven't actually seen one yet. People are all over talking about it and whatnot. I'm going to keep on playing three Decay for now, but I could see myself dropping back down to two and going back to two Chain of Vapor. It's just that I haven't been running into a lot of Maddening Hex, and I'm sort of wondering why we're playing 3 Abrupt Decay for it at this point, but let's see if my opinion changes in today's video. I've had a number of people ask me for a cyborg guide for this deck list. I have uh, some good and bad news for you. One, the cyborg guide exists. It is not on the Epic Storm website at this time, and honestly, I don't know if it's ever going to be. We were talking the Epic Storm team, and we've decided to make a change. The Cyborg Guide will no longer be free on the website. I'm sorry to say that out loud, but we were hoping that the Patreon for the website would help pay the writer team because the website assets are separate from the YouTube stuff. Like the YouTube stuff is all me. The website team doesn't work on that. I spend, I work a 40 hour job and then I spend like another 30 hours every week doing this. The website team is purely the website team like they're not the same thing so when you support the youtube channel it's a little bit different than supporting the patreon for the website the patreon for the website is exclusively towards paying the site writers we have a team we have an editor they do terrific work but the patreon goes to that people aren't supporting the patreon so i am just you know making the cyborg guide private we've already had a handful of people sign up for that cyborg guide so if you're interested the epic storm patreon or patreon.com slash the epic storm it's in the description below you can click on that that is how you get the cyborg guide for 13.1 it will be the exclusive way to get it you cannot get it any other way so you have to sign up through patreon to get it i'm sorry to say it but it's just facts uh i think that's all i have to say for this deck deck i'm already going a little bit long here if you have any thoughts questions suggestions whatever put those down below but I'm going to hop on in and play some Edge of the Gathering. If I think of anything else to mention about this deck list, I'm sure you'll find it in the middle of the video. But uh, I just wanted to thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. And thank you to our sponsor, Metallic Dice Games. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, early access to videos, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us such as theepicsroom.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via the epicstorm.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic.
All right, time for the first match. We are on the play against the former trophy leader who plays a little bit of everything. Last time I got paired into Delthar, they were on lands. Do I want to keep this? I don't really know what they're playing today, so I'm going to say yes. They they switch it up a lot. This hand has some flexibility. It's good versus blue decks. I have Burning Wish into Pulverize against Chalice decks. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to hang on to this Mishra's Bobble for the Galvanic Relay. I could play it out. I'm choosing not to. There's a Saga. You've got it. Their own copy of Bobble. I don't like this. Yep, they're on a deck that beats me. I can never beat 8 cast, assuming that's what they're playing. Okay, look at my top card. Sure. Uh-oh. Do not love this. I'm going to fetch. I don't want them knowing what I'm drawing. All right, we picked up a Verdant. Brainstorm. It's worth noting that Galvanic Relay tends to be very good in this matchup. I love the Veil of Summer. Hmm. I'm going to put the Brainstorm on top for now. If they chalice me, I can choose to fetch it away. But I might just redraw it. Saga goes to two. Engine Tomb. Chalice on one. Well, is it not a Chalice on one? Don't play with my emotions. They're drawing a card. Okay. Soul Guide Lantern. You've got it. Exiles my brainstorm. Okay, so they're on Painter. So if they have Painter plus Soul Land, I'm dead next turn. I think I'm going to try to redraw the brainstorm here. I'm going to look at the top card of their deck before making any decisions. An island. So they're on Blue Painter. Let's. Okay, I knew the top card of my deck was a Curl Mox. That might have been a small mistake. Put back this. And do I want to put back the Burning Wish? It's that or the Curl Mox. I guess having Veil Wish is better than taking a chance. So I'll just play the Rite of Flame. Does Rite of Flame resolve? It does. Fetch. I think I'm going to get Badlands here so that way I have two mountains. Relay for five. Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. I don't think I've played this game perfectly. And that was all mana and a brainstorm. But honestly, with these two cards being in my hand, I'm okay with that. Please do not kill me. Ooh, they don't even need the soul land here. I forgot about Saga. So they can go get an opal. So they have painter in hand. I believe I'm dead. They make a construct instead. Okay. I'm very good with that. They could get needle here named Wishclaw Talisman as well. They pick up an opal. Botcast. Sure. We do know that they have a basic island in their hand at the moment. They play that down to six cards. You have a bobble. And another thought cast. Okay. They're using their, their Urza's bobbles. I have revealed two dark rituals. So they saw the same card twice. And now they're drawing up to seven cards. Yeah, so we have to figure out how to beat at least one force of will effect here, but they likely have two. Draw. I'd love another copy of Veil of Summer here. Yes! Heck yes. All right, so we're going to play this Chrome Mox here. Dark Ritual. Veil of Summer. We're doing this with a Chromox trigger on a stack for a reason. If my Veil of Summers work, I want to be able to imprint. 
Be force pitching an Emery. Let's cast another Veil of Summer. And now I have the ability to imprint if I want. The Veil resolves. Okay, we can imprint this Rite of Flame, I guess. I mean, I suppose I could have cast it for one more mana. We do have a Rite of Flame in the graveyard. It mostly doesn't matter, though. All right, we'll play the Opal. Tap this for a red. I don't even need to sacrifice the uh, the diamond here. This is Storm 10. They're at 15. Boom. Game one over Blue Painter. Eight cast mixed with Painter. Let's switch this back over to card view. I have a feeling Abrupt Decay is going to be decent here, so let's bring those in. Not really interested in Carpet of Flowers. While they did reveal an island, they probably have seen the Cyanide in there, Ancient Tombs. It's not going to be a reliable mana source, so don't fall into the trap into boarding it in just because they're a blue deck. I don't even board this card again against Show and Tell variants, for example. 63 cards, we have to take out three. One Bobble, one Chrome Mox. I'm sorry, uh, that meant to be one Opal, one Chrome Mox. And then we have to find another slot. I still think Relay is fine here. Obviously, you can die after you cast it, I'm well aware. But I don't think it's something we really want to board out. Part of me thinks that we should be boarding out the Echo. Because, like, they're likely to be boarding up to eight forces. So why are we playing that game? We might even want to consider bringing in the third copy of Relay. Problem is, what do we board out? Check the cyborg guide. Okay. Um, hmm. I mean, we admittedly don't have blue painter on the cyborg guide, but you can look at a couple other decks and get a close idea. I think I'm going to try boarding out. This is definitely not on the cyborg guide. I'm going to try boarding out one right of flame here. Pretty risky, but it gives us a Burning Wish target. I mean, good hand. It loses to a Force effect, but we'll see what we can do here. Turn one, Painter Servant. Yikes. They still have five cards in hand. And they choose red. This Mox Opal is not active. We find another... Burning Wish. We're one mana short of Peer into the Abyss. Play the Opal. Let's Brainstorm. I could just Burning Wish going all in, but I want to see what my options are. Um, Does this give me Peer? I believe it does. So I put back the Bobble and print the Burning Wish. This is Peer into the Abyss. Chromox. I mean, they're an 8 4 stack post board, or so I believe. Hold control. Black. Blue. Storm 7. Force negation, pitching force of well. Not surprised. Okay. I mean, they pressured me into going all in. Okay, they have two cards in hand. We're going to fetch away the two cards on top. Mishra's Bobble or Taiga aren't really what we're looking for here. Draw. Have to pass. Another seat, two cards in hand. They're passing once again. Meyer passed the turn. Abrupt Decay would be a good draw. We'll take one going to 16. Still has three cards in the hand, and they're not deploying anything, so I'm sort of under the impression that they have another force effect. Cast Burning Wish. This is three wishes, so we have one Burning Wish left in our deck. I am Hydroed. Pass the turn. Another thing worth noting is you might have thought Aren't you better off waiting, Bryant? 
Well, they're an eight force deck, so I don't know how much better you expect it to get. But also, they're the eight force deck that has a ton of hydro blasts in it versus my red sorceries. I think you're supposed to just jam. They have three cards. Okay, we have to keep passing. Emery. Sure thing. Force of Will, Hydro Blast, Soul Guide Lantern, and another Emery. So really all they got off of that was the Soul Guide Lantern. They still have three cards in hand. They seem fairly well protected here. Take a draw. Jeez. Just play it out. You might be thinking, shouldn't I hold that for Brainstorm? I only have three Brainstorms left in my deck, so I don't know how effective that actually is. Lion's Eye Diamond, sure. Bringing back the Soul Guide Lantern. Yep. Exiling my Brainstorm. They'll draw a card. Another copy of Ancient Tomb. Still three cards in hand. Take a draw. Have to pass. Ad nauseum off the top is our best draw. And now they found a bobble. So now they have emery plus bobbles. And they bring it back. Yep. Interesting. So they activated it twice, which might tell me that one, they just want the cards immediately, but two, the card on top of my deck might be so good that they feel that they don't they can't afford to try to look into future draw steps. So I think I'm actually going to draw this. I mean I could just be reading it wrong, but subtle read, Veil vale of Summer. Okay. I mean it's not bad. Need to draw something good though. I'm like pretty close to death. Thoughtcast, yep. They're up to seven cards. So that saga is a ticking time bomb because it gets them grindstone. They bring back the Soul Guide Lantern. Okay. Another copy of Painter. And they named blue this time. Interesting. Okay. So that means that they probably have like multiple forces in hand. My own copy of Bobble. Target myself. Well, that's a good one. Question is, can we live long enough now? Draw the ad nauseum. Like, I guess Lotus Petal would be my best draw. They bring back Mishra's Bobble. And they can attack me for two, so I'm going to go to nine and I have a fetch land. So my life total for this Ad Nauseum is not incredibly high. I mean, there's a small chance we win here, but it's very small. Turn off Auto Yields real quick. Because I think I might want to cast these Veil Summers in my upkeep. They have five cards in hand. They cast the Hydro Blast. We'll go to eight. Grab our Bayou. Let's try this again. Veil of Summer. They force pitching Metallic Rebuke. They have two cards. They have Metallic Rebuke too. So I got a little bit of info out of them here. Now they get their Bobble Trigger. Draw for turn. And that does allow me to cast Ad Nauseum. I think I'm supposed to just try here because if I wait another turn, they win the game. Put Ad Nauseum on the stack for me at life. Storm 7. It's a shame this wasn't a Tendrils. They have two more counter spells. Holy moly. Their deck is all counters. Yep. You got me. Bummer. Okay. What can I do to make this better? Part of me wonders if I even want the decays. Like, am I just fighting the wrong battle? I think this might just be the better configuration. And just say, hey, if you have Painter, you have Painter. 
I'm going to try this out. Game three, we're on the play against Blue Painter. Yeah, this seems delightful. Keep. Okay, so I'm going to lead on the Volcanic player, Bobble. And then I'm going to Bobble immediately. The reason why is I plan on casting Brainstorm on their turn, and I don't want to redraw a card off Bobble by waiting. So I'll draw my card here. That's a good one. And while they're tapped out, I'm going to cast this. So we have a turn to win back by Veil of Summer. Yes. Sign me up. And I put two cards back where if they happen to have a surgical extraction, I won't get punished. Sure. So they have Metallic Rebuke up now. Turn one Painter. Yikes. Everything is red. They look at a Dark Ritual. They look at another Dark Ritual, and they're going to drop to five cards. Lion's Eye Diamond. We'll auto yield to this. So they're drawing up to four cards. So they'd have to be Force Blue card, Force Blue card here to stop me. Play a Lotus Petal. Dark Ritual. Wish Claw Talisman. That resolves. Lion's Eye Diamond. Lion's Eye Diamond. Veil of Summer. And the opponent concedes the game. Yes, take that 8 force deck. Yes. All right, we are 1 0 over Mono Blue Painter. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. Match number two, we're on the play against Pizza Rolls. I may or may not have told their opponent that I'm a big fan. Do we keep this? I don't think so. Mulligan. This hand's pretty interesting. I think we likely try this out. Bottom the Volcanic. All right, player underground C, Mishra's Bobble. Bobble, Lotus Petal. I know that we're the relay deck, but I don't think that we're supposed to hold these in case of Chalice. I guess I could target myself here to see if there's a relay on top. There's not a relay on top. All right, target my opponent. The reason to do it now is I want to dig deeper on this Brainstorm. All right, so it looks like they're on blue-red. Uh, the downside is if our opponent's playing a Thoughtseize deck, but Thoughtseize decks are not popular in Legacy. Do they exist? Yes. Are they popular? No. So I'm not going to play around a small portion of the metagame when I could just maximize my Brainstorm instead. We draw a Rite of Flame into Dark Ritual. I'm going to hold this Brainstorm. I could have cast it there. I'm choosing not to. I want to look at our draw step, see if we can find something that's better for us. They decide to surveil away a ponder. Brave. They look at our top card. Had I known we were facing Delver, I would have held on to these cards because of Relay so good in this matchup. But what if they were playing a Chalice deck, for example? And that was a good one. Let's try to find some protection. Cast the Brainstorm. We found Relay. That was certainly a good one. Hmm. I think I'm actually going to put Bobble on the bottom. Put the Wish on the top. Pass the turn. So next turn I can go Rite of Flame, Dark Ritual, Burning Wish, have them force it into Galvanic Relay. That's the thought process here. They play a Brainstorm. They get their Surveil. They Surveil away a Brazen Borrower. Very close. Actually, the Brainstorm itself will give... The opponent delirium they don't even need the land 
Their channeler is delirious. Blue to Delta, not Wasteland. Big fan. Big fan of the not Wasteland. They fetch. Into another ponder. Of course. They shuffle their library. We'll take three down to 17 life. And now we'll draw the Burning Wish. Let's activate this Misty Rainforest and we will complete our optimal pairing. So if you're curious, while the Cyborg Guide isn't on the website, the epicsfirm.com slash deck list is. I updated that three or four days ago and it has the rationale behind a lot of the updated card choices in there. So go make sure to check that out. Right of Flame. Dark Ritual. Burning Wish. Storm 3. And that resolves. Okay. I could get Thought Season a relay here for 5. I could also just grab Echo. I don't think an empty for 4 is going to be good enough. I think I like the idea of Thought Seize here. They just had nothing. Wow. Okay. Um... Not reward. I thought about getting the Echo and just going Relay into Echo, but thought that was crazy. Let's take... Hmm. It's Expressive versus Brainstorm here. My gut tells me Brainstorm is the right pick. Because they can cast Channeler into Brainstorm. Alright. Relay for five. Volcanic, Lion's Eye Diamond, Bloodstain, Mire, Dark Ritual, Opal. So no payoff spell in there. That's pretty scary. We're going to need a very fortunate draw step. Okay, Channeler can attack. So they have to choose here between deploying another threat or casting. Ooh, they drew another Brainstorm. And they didn't play the, dra uh, the Dragon's Ridge Channeler first. That was a very bad relay for five. Pretty nervous at the moment. We're taking three down to 11. Draw. Another Mire. Darn. That was the risk with getting the Thoughtseize. Play the Dark Ritual. We might as well. If they counter this cool, and if they don't, we're not losing anything. Pass the turn. 42 cards currently left in deck. They attack for 3, I'll go to 8. They have another channeler. We know that they're holding open Pyroblast. So Brainstorm Echo are off the menu. Mishra's Bobble. Target myself, I guess. Don't want that. Pass the turn. So currently, we're about to go to two. Oh no. I had an auto yield. I was planning on fetching with that trigger on the stack. That was so. D All right, that's what I get for auto yielding to that trigger. Bad play. We go to two life. Expressive iteration. They surveil another iteration away. And they kept the other card on top. Volcanic Island. Lightning Bolt. So my decision here ended up not mattering. But I still shouldn't have auto yielded through the trigger. All right, we got dead. Time to come back. All right, so we want Carpet of Flowers. We want the Galvanic, or I'm sorry, the Abrupt Decays and the Galvanic Relay. That's seven cards coming in. We take out Ad Nauseum. Board out four copies of Rite of Flame at 62. And then one of each mocks. Game two on the play. I wish I could keep this. Unfortunately, we have to ship it. 
I guess this is a keep. It's kind of sketchy. Bottom of the curl mox. Not a very good hand. I think we're supposed to just sit and be patient. Try to draw into a relay. Turn one volcanic into channeler. Sure thing. Mishra's bobble. They bobble us. Okay, they draw off their bobble. We'll take a draw step. Galvanic relay. So we found the card we wanted, but now we need more mana. We also know that we have relay, which changes the dynamic a little bit. They can attack for one. We'll fall to 19 life. Take a draw. Another copy of Brainstorm. A little bit awkward. They have land three. We fall to 18 life. I think I'm going to attempt an end step Brainstorm here. The reason why is I have to discard next turn if I miss, and if they have Pyroblast, I can untap and Brainstorm again. They're choosing to fetch with Scalding Tarn. Is this a hard cast of days? It might be. It is. They have four cards remaining in hand. So they don't have Pyroblast, I know that much. They keep their card on top with the Surveil Trigger I cannot pay. Untap. Draw. Another Veil of Summer. Come on, deck, please. Give me some mana. That resolves. Interesting. We cannot relay this turn. I think we just pass. I'm not entirely convinced we want the Mox Opal. Ponder. So this will give them Delirium. Land four, so that means that their flooded strand can now get Mystic Sanctuary. We'll take three. I think I am going to fetch away the opal. I need to try to draw like a carpet of flowers here. Oh. No, that's fine, that's fine. Draw. We drew opal anyway. Let's try to Burning Wish. Is this a hard cast force negation? It would appear so. I will attempt a Veil of Summer. They have three cards. And I am dazed. Okay, my spells uh, do not resolve. They have three cards in hand. We know one of them is an island. I'm at 10 life. My time is running out. 10 life after their attack. They have three cards. They played a volcanic, so I know that they have a basic island in hand. Right? Or, well, no. Okay, I, I'm sorry. I looked at the log wrong. They surveilled the island. So this is the same land they returned with days. Is this a Murktide? I might be dead to Murktide here. Plus four, so that's exactly seven. What? They decided not to murder me? Do they have Bolt? Carpet's pretty good. Yes. Make green, why not? Bobble. Opal. So the question is, do I burn the Veil of Summer for Relay, or do I trust that I'll get another turn? I think I'm supposed to trust that I'll get another turn. Let's look at their top card, I guess. Shredder. Okay, Relay for four. Don't fail me now. Lotus Petal, Diamond, come on, Action Spell, Veil of Summer. Okay. All right, no payoff in there. 
I don't think I'm supposed to bank on finding Veil number three. Like, if you're sitting there going, like, you should have played Veil of Summer. It's just not a reasonable ask. Yes, we hit the payoff. Now I just need to be able to live. We're going to two. They have a Ledger Shredder in hand. We know that much. And they're passing. There's a chance. Draw. Yes, I would like to trigger carpet. Make four green. Cast Veil of Summer. That resolves. Okay. Carpet of Flowers. Lotus Petal. Lion's Eye Diamond. Wishclaw Talisman. So this would be from six, seven, tendrils would be eight. So it's abrupt decay the channeler. Go to second main phase. We'll make four black. Play another Veil of Summer that's from seven. We don't need to sack the diamond here, but I'm going to anyway. Activate the Wishclaw Talisman. Grab the Tendrils of Agony. Cast it. Did I pull a rabbit out of a hat here, or are you slow rolling a lightning bolt? We did it. Okay. How about that? Game three coming up. That was a sweet one. That hand was not particularly good, and we made it work. Entering that into the spreadsheet real quickly. Turn seven. I'll resubmit here. Hands really clunky. I think we just have to mulligan this. Better. Get rid of the brainstorm. Turn one misty rainforest for volcanic island and two ponder. What we really would like to find are just more lands. Be able to play the carpet consistently into dark ritual wish claw relay. That's how we win. They did not shuffle on Ponder. Take a draw. Eh, it's fine. We, we really want to find land too. Steam vents. Shredder. Okay. Draw. That's not good. Wonder if I'm supposed to just try to relay here anyway. Go get by you. They do get a shutter trigger. Please let the carpet go. Surveils away days. I'm in trouble. Okay, so carpet resolved. If your worst card in hand is days, I don't know how I feel about this. Dark Ritual. Lion's Eye Diamond. Wishclaw. Horse and Negation Pitching Express Iteration. Galvanic Relay for seven. Couple of lands so far. Brainstorm, Dark Ritual, Burning Wish. Veil of Summer, so not bad. Especially the back half. All right, so they have four cards in hand. They play a ponder. I have to imagine that our opponent's actually Delverless Delver at the moment. We haven't actually seen Delver Secrets. I imagine that their creature suite is something like two Brazen Borrower, four Shredder, four Channeler, four Murktide, something along those lines. Or maybe like three Shredder. They surveil away, I'm sorry, uh, connive away an island. Or scalding turn, whatever. A land. Please forgive me. They'll get in for two. We go to 17. And they have three sculpted cards in hand. Take a draw. Another carpet. Wow. We'll add some green mana. Don't actually know which land I'm supposed to play here. Let's start off with the Veil of Summer. 
Okay, forcible pitching days, sure. Carpet of flowers. So they have one card in hand. We just have to figure out how to beat one card. That should be pretty easy. So I can go Dark Ritual off the bayou. Rotate Wishclaw Talisman for Veil of Summer Burning Wish Tendrils. Activate the Claw. Go grab another copy of Veil of Summer. We'll cast it. Term is six. And now we switch phases, and these this carpet of flowers will trigger. Yes, we'll make three black. Sacrifices for red. Burning wish. So this is a turn three through two forces, two dazes. <laughs> so they have a daze in the graveyard. They also pitched a daze to force. Galvanic Relay, what a card. You have a stifle? Am I being stifled here? Hydro Blast, unfortunately not good enough. They just wanted to show their last card. I commend it. We'll target them. GG's opponent, GG's. All right, we are officially 2 and 0. Oh. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. Match number three, we are facing Testacular, a well-known Elves pilot who actually did an intro to Eternal Glory very recently. This should be extremely fun. Let's see what our hand wields. Not really something we want versus Elves, Mulligan. This is fine-ish. It's a turn three, which might be too slow, but I'm going to keep it anyway. Sort of just hoping that we can lean on this brainstorm. Okay. It's a mirror match. Bayou. Green Sun. So this likely means they have another Green Sun on turn two for Collector Oof. Come on, Doc, please don't fail me now. Brainstorm. Uh, that doesn't get the job done. So that's seven mana. We need eight mana for Ad Nauseam. I think I can Echo, though. Not that it's the line that I want to be doing, but it's technically an option. Alternatively, I could fetch and cast Brainstorm again, but then I'd have to hit like Lotus Petal plus another payoff. I think I just have to Echo giving them Double Claw. It's not good. I think we end up with one mana floating. And they have two claws. That means that we have six payoff spells in our deck, which is pretty low. Bright of Flame. Bright of Flame. Dark Ritual. Wish Claw. Wish Claw. Activate. This is from five. Grab Diamond. Play diamond, it's from six. Black is the harder color of mana to make, so we're going to leave that floating. Grab the echo. Spin the wheel. Please that carry me home. Not good enough. That's the turn. So now all they need is land to go uh land activate wish claw talisman collector roof. For a 12 land deck, we sure do uh, draw a third of the lands in our library. Okay, here comes the oof, and our deck has no game one answer to it. 
Yep. I guess we can theoretically try to play through this, it's just we're not going to win. Activate the- or cast the Brainstorm. Put back the... Wish Claws, I guess. I guess I can put back one Veil. The idea how you beat the Collector Oof is that you just Tendrils through it without using your artifacts. It's extremely tough. You can sometimes do it through like a Galvanic Relay, it's just very, very difficult. Elvish Mystic. Shepherd. Wooded Foothills. Our opponent confirmed my suspicion that they had a turn two collector roof, even if I didn't uh, spin the wheel on Echo. So I'm glad that I went for it. It's just it didn't pan out. Okay, taking a world of pain here. Down to 16 life. We'll fetch up the Volcanic Island, and on our turn I'll cast Brainstorm. Draw. Right of Flame. Let's try Brainstorm. Storm 1. Holy moly. Can we do it? Let's put back these spells. They're at 17. I believe I can actually tendrils them to one. Just one isn't good enough. Right of flame. Right of flame. Dark ritual. Uh, let's hold on the wish claw. I don't actually need to play that. So I have eight total mana. Five mana with. I could double relay. Question is, do I get to untap? I think the answer is probably. Let's grab another relay here. Okay, so storm is seven. So I have 15 cards to work with next turn, assuming that I get another turn. Relay again. It's worth noting that they cannot activate the Wish Claw Talisman to go get natural order. Their own collector roof is shutting that off. Please don't murder me. Please don't murder me. Please don't murder me. Oh, they just have it in hand. Boo! Boo! All right, we lost game one against elves. I don't love that. So the reason that it's sort of a bummer is that a lot of elves play mind break in the board. So now we have to win two games against mind break trap. Take out the relays. And two Veil of Summer. Okay, let's try it out. On the play for game number two. Good hand, keep. That's interesting, their last list does not have Mind Break Trap in it. I mean, this could be outdated, but their last list does not have it. It also does not have Force of Vigor. The question is, do I want to trust that? Well, I do have this Chain of Vapor if they do have Force of Vigor, so I think I'm fairly tempted to play out the artifacts. Just need to make sure not to lazily pass through my turn. Okay. Misty Rainforest. In the Bayou. Once upon a time. Elvish Mystic, sure thing. Look at my top card. I don't think I actually want that. I'm going to fetch away Rite of Flame. Grab Underground Sea. Not going to cast Brainstorm here because I'd just be redrawing the cards where if I wait, I don't get some fresh cards. That's pretty good. Come on, Brainstorm. No dice. Put back this Chrome Mox and the Opal. Pass the turn. I have to imagine that if they didn't have a turn one discard spell, this is likely a turn two collector roof. They're going to combat. Oh, it's an opposition agent, huh? It's a one of. 
It's totally their one of opposition agent. So the question is, do I use the chain of vapor here? I think the answer is yes. Because it leaves me with the possibility of brainstorming into the wind on this turn. So I can get the bayou, or I can get the blue source. If I want to cast Brainstorm here, hmm, I think I'm just going to get the Volk. It's going to bite me in the butt. Come on, Brainstorm. That's not a good sign. We'll hide an Abrupt Decay on top. Now I have to draw through my Brainstorm. This is a really bad spot to be in. Reclaimer. Ranger. Yep. Pass the turn. Here comes the op agent once again. Four cards in hand. And they just have the hoof. Ah. I know that my top card is a dud. I mean, I could have killed the op agent on my turn. I just wasn't expecting hardcast greater huff. They also could have untapped a land and untapped this for another mana. I don't think it actually mattered that much unless I wanted to destroy both of my decays. They just got me. That's a bummer. All right, we are now two and one. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Well, let's bounce back after that loss. We are on the play. The sand is a pretty good way to come back. <laughs> we'll keep. So we have... Five, six, seven. We're one mana short of a turn one ad nauseum. Okay, our opponent's also elected to keep their seven card hand. We'll play a Lotus Petal. Mox Opal. From Mox. Opting not to imprint. Wishclaw Talisman. The resolves will pass the turn. Where was this hand against elves? Come on. Instead, we just drew blank for two games in a row. Volcanic Island. So they're likely on Delver. Veil of Summer just became our best draw. Oh. Okay. Uh, I don't know anything. Are you the Epic Gamble? It would appear so. How dead am I? Very dead. I guess our only hope is that they draw a seven card hand with absolutely no payoffs in it. Spin the wheel. Come on, all blanks. Seven, seven pieces of mana. Let's see it. They cast a right of flame. Burning wish. For Echo of Aeon, so they have another Lion's Eye Diamond in hand, or they're gambling for Diamond. I hope you miss. I hope you Entomb. Why doesn't anyone else ever Entomb? I cast Gamble, it's always Red Entomb. Here my opponent's just playing one mana Demonic Tutors. It's just not fair. Okay, looks like we're drawing a new hand and they'll have one red mana floating. They have Rite of Flame. Sure, one red floating. They're passing the turn! Yes! I mean, no, you hate to see it. Terrible, terrible tragedy. Uh, this is what they get for not registering the Epic Storm or some trash talk like that. And now we get to put Peer into the Abyss onto the stack. I played the TS Mirror recently, where my Rite of Flame made 9 mana. Like, it sounds like a lie, but it's true, because Rite of Flame counts both graveyards. So my Rite of Flame here made additional mana because of theirs. 
Love it. And the important thing is winning game number one means we get to be on the play for game number three. Cast this Burning Wish. Go grab the chicken tenders. And they conceded. Okay. Game one goes to us. Yes. All right. We can take Galvanic Relay out of our deck, bring in the Thoughtseize Chain of Vapor. And then you have to ask yourself would you rather have Abrupt Decay in your deck to imprint for either color, or would you rather have Veil of Summer? I found that Veil of Summer doesn't actually matter much in this matchup, so you're almost better off just having your Chromoxes be a little bit better. And let's try this out. Game two on the draw. This hand doesn't actually play meaningful magic. We're going to mulligan. Neither does this one. There's a good chance that the hand we keep doesn't even matter due to how often our opponents deck cast Echo Vans, but we should still mulligan to a hand that does something. Mulligan again. This is a hand that does something. Question is, what do we do? You could try to keep the Ad Nauseum, but we'd have to draw like exactly Lotus Petal. And you'd have to bottom Burning Wish. Actually, I think the Ad Nauseum here is the trap. Let's just keep a hand that Tromon Echoes. Okay. Turn one Ancient Tomb. Lotus Petal. Lion's Eye Diamond. Mox Opal. They have two cards in hand. They tap the Opal for a mana. Is this a Burgi? Burning Wish. So it looks like they will be spinning the wheel for Echo first. With, you know, quite an advantage here. Four permanents already in play. They grab the Echo of Aeons. Yeah, they're definitely in a good spot. New hand is not bad. They cast another copy of Lotus Petal, Chrome Mox. They imprint a Burgi, so they're not interested in Horn. Bright of Flame. Diamond. Two cards left. Is this another Echo? It's got to be, right? I guess it could just be Burning Wish Tendrils. The Storm Count is nine. What's going on here? They pitch a spirit guide. Why did that take so long? Like you have lethal storm. Just cast your spells. They select the tendrils and I will not make them click through it. Okay. So we can now go to game number three. Let's see if we can return the favor with another turn one win. Okay. This just isn't good enough, Mulligan. This might be. Bottom the Chrome Mox? This is a really interesting hand. I guess if you bottom the Rite of Flame, you leave yourself the ability to draw into Wish Claw or Burning Wish for turn two. Maybe that's better. We'll keep this and bottom the right of flame. Lines at diamond. I kept seven. I don't like that. Play another diamond. Mox opal. Thought sees. Really, you kept this, huh? I think the correct pick here is actually just taking the Lotus Petal. Pass the turn. Because if I take Relay or Burning Wish, they can just cast the other. Where taking Lotus Petal actually just slows them down, and I think that's the best play you can make. They play the Shatter Skull. Interesting. I thought that would be the card they would imprint to the Chrome Mox. They decided that was not true. They cycle over Master. And they're passing. 
Come on, Wishclaw. I'll take it. So here the Rite of Flame wouldn't have mattered, but I guess I do end up with an extra permanent in play. Burning Wish. Yes. Grab the Echo. One mana short of Peer into the Abyss. Let's wheel. Storm 3. Okay, we hit the Tendrils. They're at 17 because they decided to play this land. Let's start off with a Brainstorm. From 4. Okay, let's put back the Abrupt Decay. And an Opal. No, it should be Abrupt Decay Echo. Dark Ritual. We'll play the Wishclaw Talisman for Metalcraft. Opal. Gas Rite of Flame. Play another Opal. And Tendrils of Agony for 20. Your land did not matter. Click, 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 click. We got the match. We are three and one. One match left to go. Let's see if we can get it. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as seven tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. The fifth and final match, and according to my spreadsheet, we won all five die rolls in this video. Our opponent has 80 cards in their library. There's a good chance that they're on death and taxes. Our opponent has revealed their Yorian. Here we've opened up a turn two win. I'm going to keep this. They're either on death and taxes and we get to just do our thing, or they're on a blue deck and we just wait for Veil vale of Summer. All right, so we want to lead off on Bloodstained Mire because it's a land that can't be destroyed by Wasteland. They, in fact, play a Plains and a Vile. They are the death plus the taxes. Just grab our Underground Sea and turn two. We're going to try to party. Draw. Okay, we get to do the Ad Nauseam trick here. I love it. It's been a while since I've got to do this. So we're going to play Dark Ritual, Rite of Flame, Wishclaw Talisman. So this is really sweet. We're going to cast Lion's Eye Diamond. All right, so that now resolves. Play Chrome Mox. We're going to hold priority. Actually, I guess we can let the Chrome Mox resolve. And then with the trigger on the stack, so this trigger is on the stack, we're going to sacrifice this Lion's Eye Diamond for triple block. And by doing this, we are able to imprint onto this Chrome Mox after, after Ad Nauseam resolves. So here's our Wishclaw trigger searching for Ad Nauseam. Here's the Chrome Mox. Grab Ad Nauseam. So now we cast Ad Nauseam with this Chrome Mox trigger on the stack, and then from there we can imprint and win the game after that. Flipping our life away. We've already won it, but we're going to keep flipping, because I can. You can't stop me. I want to draw cards. Nine, seven. All right, we could stop there, I guess. Imprint. This Brainstorm, and now we just play out some more artifacts and win the game. Dark Ritual, Lotus Petal, Mox Opal, Wish Claw Talisman, Lion's Eye Diamond, Fisher's Bobble, Chrome Mox, Imprint the Burning Wish, Cast it. Yes. We'll grab Tentrals of Agony. Okay. 34 life. Just like we drew it up. Game two. All right, so we're going to game two against Death and Taxes. We can board out the Veil of Summers. They are literally textless cards in this matchup. We'll board in the Abrupt Decays, the Chain of Vapor. We probably want this Thoughtseize over the second copy of Galvanic Relay. 
This is a matchup where having three copies of Abrupt Decay for the Maddening Hex Control decks can certainly bite you in the butt. I am not married to three Abrupt Decay forever. We're trying it during the initial month of the Maddening Hex release, but I actually haven't seen the card yet, and we're not going to see it against Death and Taxes. How many matches have I played? Okay, since we've switched to the Bobble list, which is when Maddening Hex came out, I have played 53 matches and I have not seen a single Maddening Hex. Maybe you could go back to two Abrupt Decay. I'm not sure. Okay, so they've revealed their Yorian. And we have a hand that makes mana but doesn't do a whole lot. They've kept seven. We're going to Mulligan. Much better. Bottom of Bobble. Plateau. Okay. So they're on the red builds. So that means they likely have Pyroblast. Play out this bobble. And this bobble. Let's look at their top card. We want to do this now, which might seem silly, but they're a Spirit of the Labyrinth deck. If I wait, I can get burned. Pass the turn. Alright, we get two draws off of bobble here. Another copy of Wishclaw and a Brainstorm. Rashad and Port. I imagine that this is Thalia, and it is. Brainstorm. Uh, I don't have the tools required to win on my turn. Unfortunately, I would need one more initial mana source. Play the sea Pass. My top card is a Brainstorm. Maybe I should have kept the Brainstorm on top instead of the Wishclaw. Or the other way around. Like, I should have Wishclaw on top instead. Ooh. That hurts a lot. Now I'm punished by my Brainstorm decision, too. Yeah. They got me good here. Stoneforge Mystic. That darn wasteland, I'd have a win otherwise. That's the turn. Baracus. They activate the Stoneforge. They put Cauldra into play, and they'll attack for 7 here, putting me to 11. This is pretty much my last window to draw land. If I don't draw one here, I'm just dead. Thalia is symmetrical. Draw. Okay, we lost game number two. Almost uh, came back, not quite good enough. I'm interested to know if I had cast Brainstorm, but I have found the land here. Bummer. So I stacked my Brainstorm wrong, and I was definitely punished. Game three, we're on the play. Yes, I'd like to be on the play. They will reveal their Yorian. Unfortunately, can I keep that? Oh no, I want to keep this. I'm just not allowed to. We can't cast the Rite of Flame into Burning Wish. This is so close. We have to go to five. This does echo, I believe. Or am I wrong here? Um, Bottom. No, we, we can. We lose to a card that we're not going to say out loud, though. Diamond. Chrome Mox, Imprint the Thoughtseize, Opal, Burning Wish, yes, grab Echo of Aeons, spin the wheel, Storm 5, and it resolved, okay, so we have, I could relay here, uh, which would be pretty good. The question is, would I rather wait? Is Relay for 10 better than... Well, I guess I get bit if they have a Deafening Silence. Look at their top card, I guess. Wasteland. Dark Ritual. Wishclaw. Diamond. Sack for Red. Activate the Wish Claw. This is a relay for 10. 
And this is why we leave one relay in the deck. Storm 10. No mind break is a good sign. We have an abrupt decay, so that way we could potentially answer a deafening silence. I guess we don't have a green source at the moment. Okay, we hit a verdant. That was a very good galvanic relay. I get a draw off the bobble. We know that our opponent's drawing wasteland. Something to note, we have one thought season under 75 for beating Mindbreak Trap. It is currently underneath a Chrome Mox. So if for some reason they do have Mindbreak Trap, we have to double tendrils or tendrils, tendrils empty, that sort of thing. It's certainly possible. And with them giving us back a Wishclaw, I'm not actually concerned. So we start off here with just Dark Ritual Ad Nauseum. Because this gets through a Mind Break. Storm is two. Can't Mind Break that. There's no Echo in her deck either. Jeez. Not very good. <laughs> uh, ooh, I guess there is an Echo in her deck. Yikes, that could have been very bad for me. Let's play Mox Opal. Wow, I did not realize that we played the Cyborg Echo. I'm a little off my game today. I'm not going to pretend I'm playing perfectly here. So we're trying to figure out how to best beat multiple copies of Mind Break. Well, we're going to imprint this Abrupt Decay for starters. Play the Diamond. Play Lotus Petal. Let's tap this for a blue. Play another Opal. Brainstorm. Let's put back Wish. Ooh, I already did it. Darn. Drawing the Dark Ritual means that I could have hard cast it. I guess I could Brainstorm again. Let's play the Badlands. Dark Ritual. This is going to be a cool play. All right, so we're going to Burning Wish hold priority. In response, hold priority, cast Brainstorm. In response, we're going to add blue, black, black. So I can double tendrils, assuming they don't mind break here. They do decide to mind break, okay. Um... Let's just put tendrils on the stack. Like they are required here to have a second copy of Mind Break. In this way, there's one less Mind Break in their deck because I'm not casting Echo first. Okay. Our opponent says good games. Good games opponent. I'm not going to hit F6 just in case they're messing with me here. And that'll do. We got the 4-1. All right. We lost the favorable matchup to Elves, but sometimes your deck just doesn't perform and that happens. I'm not sure if there's any changes to be made. I, I mean, realistically, you could go back to 2-2 two and two on Chain of Vapor Abrupt Decay, but I think that's really the only slot that I would even consider changing in this deck list. I love 13.1. I hope you do too. I would like to thank you for watching. And once again, check out Metallic Dice Games. Have a great day, and as always, keep storming. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.